Hi, welcome to Beginning Engineers. Today I'm going to be talking about the super useful tool known as the decision matrix. It helps you eliminate your bias. What is a decision matrix? A decision matrix is a tool that allows you to analyze different choices based on their individual parts. We call these parts attributes. This helps eliminate bias in decision making. Why? Because you score each thing based on multiple criteria you just don't make a quick, rash decision. There's a few different types of decision matrices. You can raw score them, you can use a weighted scoring system, or a rank scoring system. That picture shows a very generic outline for decision matrix. Notice all your choices on the left, and then your attributes along the top. Down each column, you rank that attribute for each different choice. You give it a score. And then on the far right, you total up all the attributes for each choice and see what the score is. The highest score wins. At the bottom of the choices, I put something called something I think I won't even like. It's important when doing a decision matrix to put in a few things you may not have initially considered. One, based on their attributes, they may actually be good choices. And two, if they're scored low, you know your decision matrix is working assuming you don't like them, but you may be surprised and find out a choice you hadn't considered is actually good for you. Let's look at an example of a raw scoring matrix. Let's say you have three movies to see and you can't decide which one. You could see Action Puppy Adventure, A New Love, or Killer Clowns 3D. You think about movies. What's important when considering what movie to see? Well, you could have price of the ticket, length of the movie, what the critics gave it, the genre of the movie, things like that. It's important to include a key or legend of sorts so that people looking at your decision matrix, or you, in case you come back to it at a different time, can remember how the scoring works. So for example, a price of one is expensive. That's a low score. You don't like expensive things. A price of two means it's affordable. Length? Let's say you don't like a long movie right now. A one would be long. Medium's a little better, so that's a two, and short is the best. You're a busy person, so the highest score for length is a three. For critic rating, let's just say you care whether it's below 70%, which would be a one, or above 70%, a two. Similar to a Rotten Tomatoes approach. Is it worth seeing or not? Like or dislike? For genre, let's say you're not a big fan of romance movies or documentaries. Let's just give those a one. Everything else gets a two. So you just take the raw scores based on your criteria and add them up for each movie choice. In this case, a new love wins. Even though you're not the biggest fan of the genre, it has a lot of other things you like. It's a good price, it's a short movie, and the critics liked it. Looks like you're gonna go see that romance movie. If you start with this method, it typically reveals biases. So say you do this and the key is accurate to who you are. Even if a new love wins, you're going to say, hey, I'm not gonna go see that romance movie. It's not worth it. That indicates something is off with your scoring system. So let's try a ranked approach and a weighted approach. Let's get down to a scoring system that makes perfect sense for you. In the last decision matrix, everything was on the same scale. Length, went up to three because there were three categories. But in reality, you don't weigh every attribute the same. Some things are more important to you than others, so you should weight them more appropriately. Let's try that with this matrix, a weighted scoring matrix. Let's say genre is very important to you. Let's give it a weight of six, just to say that every score in that category for every choice will be multiplied by six. Critic rating you do care about too. Nowhere near as much as genre though. Let's give that a two. So it's still twice as important as other attributes, but not as important as the genre. We will say length has a bit of importance to you, but only slightly more than a baseline weight of one. So we'll say 1.5. Price, not a big deal. We'll just keep that at a one. So we're taking our scores from before, but now before we total them, we're multiplying each one by the weight of the category. Notice how the scores changed? They were six, eight, and six before. Now they're 17.5, 16.5, and 18. So before, a new love won. Now, Killer Clowns 3D wins. 
People may fight the answer of the matrix either way. If you're doing it for yourself, it's important to be honest. Deep down, do you really want to see Killer Clowns 3D? If you do, then this weighted matrix makes sense. If you really don't care, then the original matrix is telling you that a new love is the best choice for you. So you have to be honest. Let's try the final common type of decision matrix, rank scoring. Rank scoring is for those who say, I'm not really comfortable giving some arbitrary score to something, weighted or not. I'd rather just rank things. They're either the best choice, the worst choice, or somewhere in between. Well, guess what? You can do that too. There is still a bit of guesswork though with the ranking. You can say the highest rank has the highest score and the lowest rank has the lowest score, and then you can count in reverse order so that they're each only one apart, but you might have an issue where being ranked number one is more than just one apart from two, and so on. So there's still a bit of saying, well, number one is kind of twice as good as number two. But for this example, let's assume they're all equal distance apart, based on being first place, second place, or third place. Let's say you want to go on vacation. You're looking at London in the UK, Aleppo, Syria, and Paris, France. And for this vacation, you only care about a few things. The price of the vacation, the safety while you're there, the ease of communication with locals, and the food. The rank scoring method of making a decision matrix typically takes each attribute and gives each choice a rank in that attribute with no repetitions. So each attribute has a number one and has a last place. So for price, let's say Aleppo is the cheapest, London comes in second, and Paris is third, being the most expensive. Those numbers are just a rank this time. You need your legend to tell you what that means in terms of score. But in our example, a rank of 1 is a score of 3, a rank of 2 is a score of 2, and a rank of 3, the worst, is a score of only 1. It's a direct rating system. It's an inverse in this case because typically a low number rank means a higher score. Number 1's the best, even though it's a small number. So we continue on with each attribute. We say Aleppo is the most dangerous due to the conflict right now, and London is the safest. For ease of communication, we say London is the easiest, and Aleppo is the hardest. For food, we'll say Paris has the best, and London has the worst. And again, these ranks would be based on you and your opinions. Just like with our other decision matrices, we look at the numbers in the table, determine what they mean based on a legend, and then total them together. In this case, London wins, Paris is second, and Aleppo is third. Even with ranking, though, you can have a weighted system. Say you determine that price really matters to you and has a huge weight. Well, because Aleppo is number one in price, at least for this example, it might end up winning that way if you give price a weight of 10. In conclusion, it's important to remember that at the end of the day, it's still your decision. I mean, these matrices aren't your boss. But if you are considering a choice that didn't score as your top choice, or even that high, ask yourself why. Maybe you're really getting caught up on something like the color of a car or the type of food on vacation. If you step back and say, okay, other attributes matter, am I considering everything equally? You will hopefully come to a choice that is best for you all around, not based on a single emotion or single attribute. But again, attributes can be weighted differently. So think about that. If for some reason color really matters to you after months of thinking about what car to buy, give it a high weight. I, for one, really like eating different types of food on vacation. So for me, that has a higher weight. But the point of a decision matrix is to make sure you've considered other attributes and really thought about the whole package, not just one area. Decision matrices are great for eliminating bias and can be used for almost any decision. A big purchase, a vacation, what college to go to, what job offer to take, etc. Any choice is good to throw some numbers at. That's kind of the whole point behind a lot of types of engineering, especially process engineering. Thank you so much for watching this beginning engineers video. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing or giving the video a thumbs up. I hope you now have a great tool for choosing among different options and eliminating some of your bias. Have a great day.